In a loud routine moment on the factory floor, the machine keeps feeding forward and one tiny slip turns normal into motion that outpaces reaction. Never ever put any part of your body, clothing, or tools into a running machine's feed path. Draw-in systems don't pause and they don't negotiate. Feed machines win with continuous traction. Rollers, belts, and pinch points convert motor torque into a steady forward pull, and that force persists as long as power is on. Risk spikes because grip increases with contact. A brief touch can couple through friction. Contact area grows, and the system locks on, drawing anything that enters along the same guided path as the material. Reaction time loses. Without guarding, only distance and energy isolation work. Treat the intake as a no-go zone. Keep out and lock out before clearing or adjusting. On a busy worksite floor, a worker swings a hammer under a raised section to free a stubborn piece. Unaware the overhead support is starting to give way. Never, ever strike, loosen, or remove components beneath a truck-mounted transfer mechanism unless the elevated section is positively supported and the drop zone is clear. These mechanisms may be held by pins, brackets, and friction-based contacts. Hammering from below sends shock and vibration into the supports, increasing stress even when nothing appears to move. As fasteners back off or contact points slip, the load path can change instantly. When the last resisting point gives, the section transitions from supported to unsupported in a single moment. And gravity dominates once support is lost. Block the load, verify support, and clear the fall zone before striking. On a crowded night yard, a tanker sits quietly among parked trucks while being worked on until a sudden flash breaks the routine. Never ever perform hot work or allow ignition sources near a tanker unless the atmosphere is verified safe and fully controlled. Residual vapors can ignite without warning. Tankers that carry fuel or volatile liquids can retain flammable vapors long after unloading. These vapors collect near access hatches, vents, and confined spaces along the tank's top. When an ignition source appears, such as a spark, static discharge, or open flame, the vapor-air mixture can ignite instantly. Because vapor ignition happens above the liquid surface, the reaction is fast and directional. The flame front follows the vapor path, producing a brief but intense release of energy. The tank itself does not need to rupture for this to occur. The hazard exists entirely in the trapped atmosphere and the available oxygen around it. The danger is amplified in crowded yards, where multiple vehicles, poor ventilation and limited clearance allow vapors to linger and ignition sources to overlap with confined spaces. A tanker doesn't need to be full to be dangerous. Before any work begins, treat vapor space as live fuel, eliminate ignition sources, and verify the atmosphere, because invisible hazards ignite first. In a tight trench beside an active excavation, a worker steps onto what looks like solid footing, then the ground disappears without warning. Never, ever trust a trench edge, a loose cover, or look stable ground. Verify every step, protect every opening, and keep people out of the collapse zone unless the area is properly secured and controlled. What makes this hazard so deceptive is how sudden it is. Around excavations, the soil at the edge is often undercut, saturated, or disturbed by digging, vibration, and repeated foot traffic. A thin crust can form on top while the material underneath is voided or weakened. It feels firm for one step, then fails on the next. If the worker stepped on a board, sheet, or loose debris spanning part of the opening, it may have been acting like a temporary bridge without real support. The moment body weight shifts onto it, the load concentrates at a weak point. The support slips or snaps, and gravity takes over instantly. In a narrow trench, there's rarely room to widen stance, step back, or recover. Once the support base gives way, there's no time to catch it. This is why excavation work has to be treated like working near a hidden trapdoor, because sometimes it is. Before anyone approaches a trench or opening, the job needs a clear, safe path that's built, not guessed. Stable access, firm walking surfaces, and covers that are rated, secured, and cannot slide or tip. Any opening that isn't actively being worked must be protected the same way every time, guarded, covered, or barricaded, so a simple step can't turn into a sudden drop. In a cosmetics plant, a simple wipe on a plastic container sets up a chain reaction no one can see coming. 
Never, ever rub or wipe plastic containers unless the system is properly bonded and grounded, especially anywhere combustible fluids or vapors may be present. Never, ever do this around flammable liquids or gases. Static electricity is enough. Plastic is an excellent electrical insulator, which means any charge created by friction has nowhere to escape. When a worker rubs or wipes a plastic container, electrons transfer between surfaces through the triboelectric effect, rapidly building static electricity. If the container, transfer system, or worker is not bonded and grounded, that charge accumulates instead of dissipating. In liquid handling areas, combustible vapors can linger invisibly above containers and openings. Once the static charge reaches a critical level, it can discharge as a spark, often during separation movement or contact break. If a container isn't grounded, don't rub it. If vapors may be present, don't touch it, because when static has nowhere to go, it discharges unpredictably. Inside a cavernous construction floor, one wooden frame is held upright without any mechanical restraint until gravity quietly starts doing the math. Never, ever rely on human strength to restrain large, unstable loads. If a structure can fall, it must be mechanically secured before anyone works beside or beneath it. This setup depended on roll control. One worker positioned to hold and stabilize the board's Josser's frame, the other working the placement. That human hold is already a weak control, but it becomes dangerous the instant it's not continuous. When the stabilizing worker steps away, turns, or stops holding, the frame loses its only counterforce against tipping. With a tall, narrow structure, it only takes a small shift, an adjustment, a bump, a minor lean for the center of mass to drift outside the base. The moment that happens, gravity creates a rotating moment, and the frame starts to fall. And because this happens fast, the worker closest to it has almost no room or time to react. That's why I'll hold it is never a real control unless the load is also mechanically restrained. If one person is assigned to hold, spot, or brace, they can't multitask, drift, or step out early. The work must stop the second that roll isn't active. But the bigger lesson is this. A plan that requires perfect human holding is already a failing plan. If the load can tip, it must be restrained with bracing, clamps, temporary supports, or mechanical handling before anyone works beside it. While cleaning beneath a massive piece of equipment, the workspace feels routine until the weight above silently decides otherwise. Never ever work beneath suspended or partially supported equipment unless it is fully secured, locked, and verified immobile. Large industrial equipment stores potential energy simply by being elevated. Brackets, mounts, hinges, or temporary supports carry that weight by maintaining alignment and friction. During cleaning, even light contact, pushing debris, brushing surfaces, or shifting footing can introduce small forces that those supports were never designed to resist. Once a support point slips, flexes, or disengages, the load instantly transitions from supported to unsupported. There is no warning phase. Gravity takes over immediately, pulling the mass straight down along the shortest possible path. Because the system relies on static balance rather than active restraint, failure is sudden and complete. Heavy equipment doesn't announce when it's about to move. If something can fall, pivot, or slide, it will. Once the last resisting force disappears, cleanup should only happen after equipment is mechanically secured, energy is removed, and the space beneath is treated as a no-entry zone. Stability isn't proven by stillness. It's proven by restraint. High above the ground, two workers lean over guardrails to manage a truckload. Everything looks steady until balance quietly disappears. Never ever lean beyond guardrails or rely on body position alone when working at height. If your center of gravity crosses the edge, gravity will finish the job. The task involves pulling and positioning material across the top of a truck from elevated scaffolding. To reach farther, one worker leans past the guardrail, shifting body weight outward. At that moment, the guardrail stops being protection and becomes a pivot point. As the tool applies force to the load, that force pushes back through the arms and torso. The higher the reach, the farther the center of gravity moves beyond the platform. Once it crosses the support base, balance is no longer recoverable. There is no warning, no slow slide, just a sudden rotation driven by gravity and leverage. 
Working at height turns small decisions into big consequences. If a task requires leaning, reaching, or stretching past protection, the setup is already unsafe. Adjust the platform, use fall or rest systems, or change the method entirely. Inside a busy warehouse aisle, pallets stacked high and workers moving through tight lanes, the forklift creeps forward and no one realizes what's happening until the last second. Never, ever move a forklift unless your eyes, travel path, and forks are fully aligned because divided attention turns controlled motion into an invisible strike zone. Forklifts are deceptively powerful because their motion is smooth, quiet, and continuous. Even at low speed, the combined mass of the truck and its load carries significant momentum. Once the drive wheels engage, the machine does not pause, hesitate, or sense obstacles. It moves exactly as commanded. When an operator looks down instead of forward, visual feedback disappears while motion continues. The forks extend beyond the front wheels, creating a forward reach that closes distance faster than a person can react. In tight work areas, this geometry turns blind spots into compression zones where space vanishes instantly. Forklifts demand full visual control at all times. Eyes forward, path clear, movement deliberate. Because once a forklift starts rolling, attention is the only break that matters. In a stone yard, a worker steps onto a large slab, and in an instant, the slab shifts and falls sideways. Never, ever stand on an unstable stone slab or stacked material. If it isn't secured, it isn't a platform. The slab was resting in an unstable position, supported by uneven contact and friction instead of a locked base. When weight shifted even slightly, the slab's balance point moved past its support edge. Gravity then took over, rotating the slab sideways fast. Because heavy stone doesn't flex or settle, it tips. Treat every loose slab like it can move, because it can. Keep feet off unstable stone, secure the base first, and use proper access equipment instead of stacked material.